Hey everybody, how's it going? I know it's been a while, especially been a while since you've guys seen this truck, at least on my videos. I'm sure you guys have seen it in the background of my dad, well, slash my mom's truck over here. He's been doing the videos of. He got a, kind of got me encouraged when he uh, brought this around here and bought it and everything, so I decided to move mine around. If you guys remember, this was actually over there, the last video I put it up. And uh, I've got a little bit done to it. Well, not much really at all. A little bit as in I've gotten the headers on and I've gotten spark plugs and I got all the stuff I need. Those two transmission lines there, I got to get the radiator in and then I can run them. But uh, the reason I haven't got the radiator in yet is because I want to go on and get the power steering pump on. But at the moment I cannot do that because this power steering pump came off of a 6.2 diesel that was in it with a 6.5 and it has hydro boost but the problem is the brackets on here are made for the 6.2, 6.5 so I have to either find a power steering pump with the brackets to go on a small block with the hydro boost or I need to get a pulley puller pull the pulley off of that and mount the brackets that go to a small block to that hydro boost pump and that will uh, take care of that and go on to slap that on there and then I can finish up everything with the motor. Got the headers on like I said. Um, I need to get some of the studs for the carburetor on the intake to go into the intake. And I'll really pretty much have all that done pretty quick whenever I actually get to it. So that little pump thing's holding me up and then there's going to be no problem there. Now, what I'm up to now is I have my drive shafts. You guys remember this truck had a 700R4 in it, which had the slide-in input. That's the old drive shaft. Now I have the 205 new process, and it has yokes on both ends, or universal joints. So uh, what I have to do here is this drive shaft is not going to be long enough. Um, being the truck's lifted and everything, it just just does not have the length it needs when I do have it in there to try to hook it up it's fully extended and you know if it's fully extended just sitting like it is if you ever um, got some articulation or anything in the rear and it would just try to pull out so we can't have that so it needs to be lengthened also if you look here we have different size universal joints so what should I do here this end is the end I need for the rear end that's in this truck. And this end is the end I need for the hookup to the transfer case. And I also need a longer drive shaft. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this drive shaft here. I'm going to find my length that I need with this tape measure. And we're going to cut this drive shaft and make it longer. And put this end on this drive shaft. And that I'll have everything I need. Um, we'll dial and get it in. I'll have my dad help me with that. Get it perfect and everything. And that'll be all we need to do. This is a little bit larger shaft. So therefore it should slide right over this drive shaft. So we should be able to good, be good and get that like we need it and everything. So what I need to do now before I run completely out of light. Is get this drive shaft in here. And just find out my length that I need. So I'll get that done, and maybe if I get a chance, we'll go on and go into the shop and we'll try to knock out that drive shaft, or at least start on it. I might not have much video for you guys, but I definitely want to keep you guys updated and start working on it a little bit more, and we'll get this truck moving soon, because it really doesn't have much to go. It's just been very slow going and then I'm going to take the chance and when I can I'll, I'll tell you guys that want to know all about my new job and everything and what's been keeping me away with that trying to get everything on you know back to normal back on track with work and get back into the groove so I know how everything's going and everything and be able to use my time wisely which I have a lot more of it now so we'll talk about that a little bit but first let's going to get this measurement for this drop shaft
All right, guys, so what I came up with is about three inches of length I need added. What I did, which I know it's way too dark in there for you guys to see, so. Let's get my little light on for you. What I did was I just put the drive shaft in there for the length, you know, just, that's not the right size length, and I, or not the right size universal joint. But I also want to add, you guys, I know that they make the offset joints, one that'll fit in that drive shaft, and with a different size here to fit into the rear. But since I also needed a length, I figured this would be the best route we should go. What I did was, I slid that to the midway point. So you can have travel inwards and outwards depending on the rear end going up and down. So find the halfway point where that slides and hold it there, put it up to the yoke where it goes on the transfer case and uh, just measure how far it is. It needs to go to be able to sit in there like it is at the midway point. So I came up with three inches. So that's all I need is extend it three inches and we'll be good to go. Now I'll tell you guys a little bit since the rest of the stuff we can do in the shop there and I won't have to worry about running out of light. I recently stopped working in Fayetteville and Stop doing line work because you most of you know this is what I did. Um, stopped doing that completely and I decided to utilize my CDLs and get a job with a, a company called Noble Oil. And what they do is recycle used oil pretty much. But not just that. I mean, we go, I'm in a vac truck and we go places and we essentially just suck up used oil, water. Um, a little bit of everything. Now it's uh, old water separators at dealerships and you know sumps in the bottom of like Jiffy Lubes and stuff like that. And we bring it back to the, the plant and they, they refine it and they do their thing with it and make fuel and different kind of things with it. So pretty cool job. Um, I've been going, I've been to Georgia for a couple of days already. I've been to Virginia several times, South Carolina. Um, traveling a little bit getting some miles um it's pretty nice some days i'll get home at one o'clock in the afternoon and be done for the day and already have my 10 hours and some days i work 14 hours i uh i came from getting paid every week to every two weeks which i didn't know how that was going to work out but it absolutely works out for the better for me um i guess i'm just that type of person that you know i'm able to budget a thousand times better like that so it's working out pretty good Figured I'd let you guys know that everything's good. I just needed to get kind of in the zone and figure out how everything was going to work with that before I really told you guys about it. But definitely wanted to share. I know I have some people on here that you know we're pretty cool with and pretty close to that I already know, but still wanted you guys to know. So we're going to go on and start working on this drive shaft in a little bit here. And yeah, I'll try to get it in. I'll try to get by the auto parts store sometime tomorrow. Since tomorrow is my last day for the week, I'll have a let's see, Thursday to Mon or yeah, Thursday to Sunday off. So I have a pretty good weekend, and uh, we should be able to get quite a bit done with this. I've went down to the house and I've gotten some more sheetrock in since I last showed you guys, but that's slow and steady. We'll keep working on it on the side and get get as much as we can get done. So, all right. I'll show you guys more. So this is then we need and we're gonna Cut this one here, and we're going to attempt to put this drive shaft inside this one, and that'll give me my three inches that I needed extra length. Actually, I think we're going to do a little different. Uh, I was going to slide this in in there and dial indicate it in and go with it, but uh, I'm, I'm kind of scared to do that. I don't like doing that. So I think what I'm going to do is, once he gets this one cut, I'm going to take this one and slide it out of here, and I'm going to chuck it up in the lathe. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this weld down and turn everything down until it presses, press fits inside and then put it back like it's supposed to be. 
that's probably going to be the easiest way to do it, or the best way to do it. Uh, I don't want to take a chance on sliding it in there. We could slide it in, and we could uh, dial indicate it in, and we can weld it. That's not a problem, but I know how my son drives, so we need to go on and do it right. I don't know if I have the money for all that kind of work, buddy. <laughs> you owe me for the rest of your life, buddy. Well, all right, so we got different plans here. So kind of goes out of my jurisdiction for a little bit, but I'm going to try to learn and watch him as he does it. Uh, and uh, to go he's going to teach me how to do it on lay. That even sounds better. And uh, we'll get this cut, and then when he gets time after, he's making, grading his little uh, Christmas present here, which is going to be awesome. Don't want to butt into that too much, so I'll get it cut and do as much as I can. And I'll show you guys more. Alright guys, so we got this chap in here now, and we're waiting for it to cut through. It's right there on that well, so might take a little while for this one, so we'll just let it do its thing and we we'll sit here and not watch him weld, but just enjoy all the sounds and help him out when I can. Alright everybody, so where I had cut this drop shaft was right where the yoke was pressed into the drop shaft, so I had to take a chisel and a hammer there and just beat that part that was pressed into the drop shaft out so we can get a good measurement. And uh yeah, he's going to show me show me how to do this his way, the way he's wanting to do it and everything, and we'll get it done. But he just got a Highway Patrol rotation call, so I'm going to try to go and catch up with him and go and do that with him. Okay, what I'm going to do is make the outside diameter where I'm turning right here the same as the outside diameter of the drive shaft. It's 1890, so we've got 120,000. Okay, go. 120,000. Thirty thousand take off. Thirty thousand take off, so which is only fifteen on each side. Okay, so when we when you get this down where it needs to be, okay. how uh, I thought we were pressing this in. We are. I want a lip on this edge right here the same size as the shaft. Okay. Okay, we're gonna cut the rest of it down to go inside and then it's gonna come up and fit against a an edge up here. Okay. You understand it as it goes. And uh, this will probably go ahead and I can probably knock it off if I want to take it. Alright, so we got that piece knocked off. Now you're going to bring this down further than the outside down to the other side down, right? Bring it down to the inside down. So bring it down to the inside down. So you're going to leave a lip there that's okay. the same as the outside down. There'll be a shoulder left up here. It'll almost probably be a little narrow shoulder because we may end up losing some of this end if we won't put it up so small. I got you. Well, you guys heard that. We made it the outside diameter of the other drop shaft. So now he's going to bring it in to the inside diameter of the other drop shaft. So there's going to be like a little shoulder lip there for it to stop at. That is still the same as the outside diameter of the other drop shaft. It makes sense. Alright guys, so while he's turning that a little bit, we measured the inside diameter. It's 2 inches, 500, and around 560 thousandths. So now, I'll show you. We're turning this down to that diameter. And now you can start to see that little shoulder he's got going on there. And then it'll just press in. And we can tack weld it, dial indicate it, get it straight. Balance perfect where it need to be, and then load it up. Take ten more. Off. There you go, all the way around. So it's too dark to, uh, you know, dial indicate it and weld it all up together tonight. But we can just see if the length's good. See if you measure right. Yep. And my end. Do good? Yeah. Sweet. You happen to have another one of those straps? Nope, I had to hunt one up for mine, but I know there was another one out, I think. That's good, because I'm missing that one. Well, who's your phone? No, this one was here, I'd have got it. Because <laughs> I had to go find one.
I can strap this one back. Well, that's good. Lengthwise, is good, everybody. Um, now we're just gonna have to tack weld it, and then we'll get the dial indicator. Or Knock it out tomorrow, get a good weld around. We need to clean this up. We need to grind that up so it'll get a good weld on it and everything. Sand it up, whatever. But, yeah. One more thing done. One more thing done. Right. Well, we've been needing that, so I'm going to go and bolt everything up, get it like it is. Get some sandpaper over here, the little wheel, and clean that up a little bit so we get a good weld on it but there you go guys I got drive shaft in uh, the front drive shaft I think we'll be good on it we'll see how that works I'll try to test it out tomorrow show you guys more tomorrow but I'm going to post this video for you guys now so we're getting back to it sorry about the dark no light I'm using my flashlight here but I'm sure you guys know how it is it gets late very very it gets dark outside very early here so oh well just that time of year all right well we gotta go to work tomorrow should get off pretty early and i'll get back to it and show you guys more i appreciate you for watching if you haven't yet please hit the subscribe button and i'll be seeing you soon bye bye everybody